this is Isabella reporting for the Ancient World CNN News. It's been crazy during the years 450 BC to 300 BC. Today I'll tell you all about Greek mythology, Greek poetry and fables, Greek drama, Alexander the Great, Athens, sports and entertainment, and Greek fashion. We also have an exclusive interview with Athena, the goddess of wisdom and the protector of cities. First, I will tell you all about Greek mythology. The 12 most important Greek gods and goddesses are Zeus, who is the king of the gods and the god of the sky, rain, and lightning, Hades, the god of the underworld, Poseidon, the god of the sea, Her Hera, the goddess of marriage, Hestia, the goddess of the home, Artemis, goddess of the hunt and wild animals, who is a twin sister of Apollo, Apollo, the god of light, Hermes, the messenger of the gods and god of the market, Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, Athena, the goddess of wisdom and protector of cities, and Ares, the god of war. All of the 12 most important Greek gods and goddesses lived on Mount Olympus, the highest mountain in Greece. The Greeks believed their gods and goddesses were a large family, all related in some way. Hera, Hades, Poseidon, and Hestia were all brothers and sisters of Zeus. Artemis, Apollo, Athena, Hermes, Ares, and Aphrodite were children of Zeus. I know I'd sure like to be a god or a goddess. Now we have our exclusive interview with Athena. Come on out, Athena. Hi, I'm Athena, and I'm the goddess of wisdom and the protector of all cities. Do you enjoy being a goddess? Yes, I do. Can I ask you a brain teaser? Of course. You are driving a bus. Four people get on, three people get off, then eight people get on, and ten people get off. Then six people get on, two more people get off. What color were the bus driver's eyes? Whatever color your eyes are, because you are driving the bus. Correct. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Athena. No problem. See you later. Bye. Don't worry, Athena will be back soon. Stay tuned. Right after this commercial break, I will be telling you about Greek poetry and fables. Coming soon, the Ancient Greece Greek Gods and Goddesses play. This summer, July 25th at noon. Anybody who wants to try out to be in the Mighty 12 Superheroes of Greek Myth play, go on July 1st to the theater on the slopes of the Acropolis in Athens, at three, that will be where the play is held, and you may get the hat stand a chance to be in it. Everybody will be guaranteed a part, but not everybody will get to be Zeus in a Greek and or a Greek god or goddess. So I advise you to get there ASAP that day to be guaranteed a good part. Now. Back to Isabella Cousantinou reporting for the Ancient Greece CNN News. Now I will discuss Greek poetry and fables. The earliest Greek stories are called epics. These long poems told about heroic deeds. Greek, a, a Greek fable is a short tale that teaches a lesson. Greek poetry and fables teach Greek values. Now I will discuss Greek drama. Drama is a story told by actors who pretend to be characters in the story. In a drama, actors speak, show emotion, and imitate the actions of characters they represent. The two dramas are comedies and tragedies. In a tragedy, a person struggles to overcome difficulty but fails. And the story has an unhappy ending. In a comedy, the story ends happily. Tragedies and comedies are staged at a theater on, a, on the slopes of the Acropolis in Athens. All the actors in the play were men. Even the female parts are played by men. Now I will tell you about a wonderful man named Alexander the Great. Guess what? I got a message four years ago that Alexander the Great invaded the Persian Empire and the Persians were no match for his troops. Now more recently, 330 BC, the last Persian king died and Alexander the Great now rules over all the last Persian king's lands. Oh my gosh. Here's a picture of Alexander the Great. It's him in live in action. It's a good soldier. And now, now I will be discussing Athens with the help of Athena, who Athens was named after. I'm back. Yes, you're back. In Athens, there are 285,000 residents in all, some 150,000 were citizens. Although only 43,000 of these women 
with particular political rights, foreigners in Athens were numbered about 35,000 population, including 100,000 enslaved people. Athens became the trading center of the Greek world. How, you may ask? Merchants and artisans grew wealthy by making and selling, selling pottery, jewelry, leather goods, and other products. Here are pictures of Athens and a map that shows where Athens were, was located in ancient Greece. about sports and entertainment in ancient Greece. From childhood, ancient Greeks were trained for regularly held competitions called agons. Each town has a gymnasium or sports center and a stadium. Wrestling, the discus throw, boxing, and the long jump are among the first sports practiced in ancient Greece. The most popular event is the foot race. The future may hold a lot more sports because look what we have in ancient Greece now. I, pre I predict daily competitions in the future. Now I have Athena racing Artemis, the goddess of the hunt and wild animals, twin sister of Apollo. They will be demonstrating the foot race. Goddess versus goddess. I can't wait to see how this turns out. On your mark, get set, go! <laughs> the winner is Athena! Good try, Artemis. She just beat you. Now I will close up today's show with Greek fashion. Ancient Greek clothing is made of linen, wool, and sometimes silk. They dyed wool or plant fibers bright colors such as blue, pink, purple, and yellow. The future may not hold the same types of clothing due to what the future holds now because the ways of living keep advancing. Here are some pictures on ancient Greek fashion to give you a, an idea of what, it, of what it's like. Well, that's all we have for today. Join us next week when we talk all about the Trojan horse, real or unreal. Thanks for watching.